Ulnar nerve entrapment issues are all too common in climbers, but not too easily diagnosed. In fact, I would argue that true ulnar nerve issues are often misdiagnosed as climber's elbow or medial epicondylitis. The reason for that is the overlapping location of symptoms as well as overlapping mechanisms of injury. So if you have nagging or mysteriously intermittent pain, tingling, or burning at the inside of your elbow or fingertips, you might want to stick around. On occasion, ulnar nerve issues are actually quite easy to identify when they cause symptoms in your pinky and sometimes ring finger. It may be numbness, tingling, burning, or just a dull ache and may be associated with increased pain at the elbow. But it's not always so straightforward. Often you may just have pain at the elbow which increases with certain positions or tissue contractions. Maybe you can climb for hours with no pain but then you open a car door and it hurts. Maybe it's only specific arm positions that cause issues but everything else is fine. Maybe you get weird sensations in your elbow when looking up for your next hold. If you experience symptoms like these, you should be questioning the true nature of your injury as it is not likely a tendinopathy or tendinitis. So let's find out what's really going on. The two major challenges of diagnosing and fixing ulnar nerve irritation are making sure it really is a nerve issue and not something else entirely like FTP tendinopathy and identifying what's actually causing the nerve issue to begin with. You see, the ulnar nerve can cause pain at the elbow because of mild entrapment at other locations such as the shoulder, neck, or thoracic outlet. There will always be some compression of the ulnar nerve in the elbow in certain positions, but entrapment at other sites can cause this compression to increase beyond its normal range and cause pain. This means that even though the symptoms are on your elbow, the root cause might be somewhere else, so we can't just assume entrapment is happening only at the elbow. To illustrate this a bit better, let's look at a common move in climbing, the lock-off. This is a particularly nasty lock-off though, and it's on a sloper. Your elbow is maximally flexed, which compresses the ulnar nerve at the medial elbow in the cubital tunnel. Meanwhile, your finger and wrist flexors are maximally engaged on that microcrystal on the sloper with your FDP, FDS, and FCU muscles working hard to make that happen. Since the ulnar nerve is sandwiched between the FTP and FDS and travels under the FCU, it gets compressed during heavy engagement. The upper extremity, the shoulder and scap, is also engaged with the shoulder pulling down and back. Without good shoulder stability and training, the humerus may shift slightly forward or anterior, which may add a bit of compression to the ulnar nerve at the brachial plexus. Don't forget, you're also looking up to spot your next hold, which happens to be off in the other direction, causing you to turn your head away from the lock-off. This creates tensioning of the ulnar nerve from the neck, similar to pulling a string tight from one end. Coincidentally, you've also watched our video on climber hunch and know that you have poor posture but never bothered to fix it. Now the subsequent shortening of your pec minor is coming back to bite you as it puts pressure on your ulnar nerve. And finally, to top it all off, you know from our video on the biomechanics of pull-ups that at the top of a pull-up, or in this case a lock-off, your tricep is activated to become a push muscle. Helpful, except that the medial tricep covers the ulnar nerve and can compress it. See how multifaceted this is? With so many potential entrapment sites, all these structures may increase the ulnar nerve compression in the elbow, ultimately resulting in elbow pain. So how do we determine if we truly have an ulnar nerve issue? Passat! Oh hey, didn't see you there. If you're interested in joining us on this journey to create the largest online library of free training and rehab content for climbers, you can show your support by purchasing an official Hoopers Beta t-shirt. We've got various designs and styles available right below this video or with the link in the description. We're going to do three tests for ulnar nerve irritation in order of intensity. However, if you're very obviously positive to the first test, you may not need to do number two or number three. Test one, elbow flexion test. Perhaps the simplest test, the elbow flexion test, simply involves maximally flexing your elbow, extending your wrist, and holding this position for 30 to 60 seconds. Note any pain or tingling sensation. The faster the symptoms come on, the more significant the ulnar nerve entrapment may be. 15 seconds is probably significant, whereas if it takes two minutes, that's no big deal. Test number two is the ulnar nerve test, aka the upper limb neurodynamic test for the ulnar nerve. So you'll basically start with depressing your shoulder. This will be important to maintain throughout the test. You're then going to abduct your arm. Again, don't elevate, keep the shoulder depressed. You're gonna flex the elbow and extend the wrist and the fingers as if they're pointing in towards your face. You'll then look away and towards the fingers and you'll know any pain or symptoms while performing the test.
Test number three is the prayer stretch test. To perform this, simply line up your fingertips and place the fingertips and palms um, together. The thumb should be gently resting upon your chest. Keep the forearms level with the ground and then slide the hands towards one armpit. Hold this position for about four to five seconds, noting any symptoms that you may feel. Come back to center afterward and compare to the other side, noting any differences in any of the symptoms. If any of these tests create pain or tingling in your elbow, ulnar side of your forearm, or the fourth or fifth fingers, that's an indication that you may have ulnar nerve issues. If that's the case, you'll want to continue to the next section of the video where we finalize your diagnosis before moving on to rehab. But now that you've tested positive for at least one of the ulnar nerve tests, there are a few signs you can look for to help confirm your suspicions. Truck driver's elbow is a name I just totally made up, but it's related to ulnar nerve screening. Often, ulnar nerve issues are irritated by sustained pressure directly over the nerve, such as resting your arm on the door of your car or just while you're bored studying or working on the computer. This is another sign that it is more likely an ulnar nerve issue rather than climber's elbow. Pay attention to your lifestyle and posture. Do you notice your symptoms are worse after you've been sedentary for a while? Well, the forward head and rounded shoulder position may be causing shortening of certain muscles which further entrap the ulnar nerve. Another classic, the time for bed, but I'd rather watch Emil Abramson's vids syndrome, which is totally real and I didn't make that one up at all. This is what happens when you lay in bed on your back and hold your phone up with your elbows bent for a long period of time. If you notice that you get numbness and tingling quickly, it's likely due to compression of the ulnar nerve in the elbow with the sustained flexed elbow position. Finally, if your triceps are particularly tight or shortened, they can compress the ulnar nerve. This is something you'll want to assess because it will help guide your rehab. You can test your tricep length with a few simple steps. Start by making a fist with your thumb tucked under. You're going to want to place your hand on the back of your neck right about at the spine and then reach your hand as far down as you comfortably can. Then you'll want to compare on the other side as well. You may want a friend or a phone set up to record this so you can compare your results and see which one goes further. If you notice a tricep limitation on the same side you're experiencing symptoms, a limited tricep length may be adding to your entrapment. Rehabbing an ulnar nerve issue involves treatment of all the possible issues that are causing symptoms. That means potentially improving ulnar nerve mobility, but also addressing entrapment sites. It can be broken down into three categories, nerve mobility, stretching, and strengthening. Now, exactly how important each category will be for you will depend on your specific issue and needs. To increase ulnar nerve mobility, you can do nerve flossing and or nerve tensioning. Some people will tell you flossing is the safe way to go, while others will swear that tensioning reduces their symptoms best. How do you know which one to do? Well, they act on the nervous system in mechanically different ways. Tensioning is more aggressive and tractions the nerve, while flossing is more conservative and just mobilizes it. I always recommend starting with flossing and only moving on to tensioning if flossing is ineffective. If tensioning aggravates your symptoms, do not continue. If it provides you significant relief, continue at a moderate frequency. So to perform nerve flossing, you're simply gonna start with your arm abducted by your side with your fingers and wrist relaxed and the elbow flexed. You're then simply going to straighten the elbow while you extend your wrist and fingers. You'll go in and out of this, holding briefly only for about one second in each position. For a bonus, you can move your head with the motion. So as I go and straighten further away, I bring my head toward, and as I bring it back in, I go in the opposite direction. Or, for a double bonus, do what I call the Clio, where you simply do both arms at the same time. To perform nerve tensioning, we're actually going back to the prayer stretch. So this should look familiar as the test that we performed earlier, but it's actually a form of treatment as well. Simply line your palms up together with the fingertips and palms touching and forearms level with the ground. You'll then slide both hands over towards one side, trying to get the hands close into the armpit and hold for about four to five seconds. Return back to center and repeat. It is okay to do on both sides if you would like, just monitor for your symptoms on either side. Some of you might just feel a lot of tightness just trying to get the arms level. That might just be due to some tightness or limited mobility of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. It's important to try and get the wrist extended as you can, so it's okay to allow the fingers to bend a little bit if needed. Next, we also need to increase the mobility of certain muscles that may be compressing the nerve. 
Keep in mind that you won't necessarily need to perform all of these if you figure out which muscle is causing your entrapment. We'll use the right arm as the affected arm in these examples. First, with the overhead tricep stretch, reach your affected arm up and pretend as if you're trying to scratch your upper back. Use your other arm grabbing at the elbow to help pull your right arm as far as you can until you feel a good stretch. Try and keep the hand close to your back. Don't let it come over like so. You want to try and keep it touching the whole time. Next, a pec minor stretch. A doorway stretch is great for this. Simply find a door frame or other sturdy object with the palm facing forward and arm about 30 degrees away from the body. Place your hand on the object, then step forward and lightly rotate to the left away from the targeted arm. You should maintain a gentle bend at the elbow, otherwise it'll turn it just into a bicep stretch. Hold for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then you can change positions. You can go up a little bit higher and find other restrictions. Now, you may get a little more pec major involvement in these other positions, but that is a-okay. Next, the flexitatorum profundus stretch. With the right elbow bent, use the left hand to pull or push the fingers and wrist back into extension. Simply hold this stretch for 30 to 45 seconds and repeat. Next, let's stretch out the neck with that thoracic region. Use the left hand to grab just under the clavicle or collarbone on the right side. Push in and down with the left hand. Keeping the right shoulder down, not shrugging it up, look up and away as if watching an airplane fly over. You should now feel a nice stretch kind of in the front right side of the neck. Other treatment options may include reducing training to the triceps to reduce irritation, and in extreme cases where function is significantly impaired, whether sensory or muscle, surgical intervention may be warranted, which is outside the scope of this video. If you found this information helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and or buying a t-shirt to support the channel. And if you have a nagging injury that you'd like us to make a video about, let us know down in the comments. Until next time, train, climb, send, and repeat.